Hello everybody, this is Antonio Wolf walking through the California hills yet again with my uh, little buddy there. Uh, yesterday I did a live stream with uh, Chad Haig from the uh, Chad African uh, YouTube channel. And uh, I'll link that in the description and so you can check it out. It's, uh, mainly a discussion about... Uh, the future of a post-oil society in a, a bad sense, in which we haven't found a, a replacement for oil, and therefore we're going to be forced back to a, somewhat of a pre-industrial lifestyle. And the question of, uh, well, what philosophies are going to be relevant, to, you know, in that future time? You know, is Marx going to be relevant? Is Hegel going to be relevant? Uh, I mean, another topic we bring up is Kaczynski. Uh, it was a good chat, so uh, check it out. Uh, anyways, one of the things that we talked about in that was... Uh, <laughs> one of the things that we talked about in that was uh, the question of system. And so, you know, I just wanted to go a little quickly over what is a uh, Hegelian system. Uh, the Hegelian idea of system comes from, well, the German idealist, uh, a general idea of system, which is uh, a unified uh, theory of knowledge, which, uh, you know, depending on how far you're willing to go, is also at once the unified theory of being. Uh, so... A lot of people seem to have this idea that uh, system is a really bad thing, um, you know, because a uh, system has a very bad rap nowadays. Uh, it has totalitarian vibes, you know, systems are to about totalities. You know, totality sounds like a bad thing. T totalitarian vibes, you know, it doesn't sound good politically. Uh, but that's not what... Uh, German idealist systems uh, thinking is about. Uh, the idea of systems is the idea of how do we unify the world in our thoughts in a way that it is also unified in reality. Um, Chad and I had a bit of a, I think a misunderstanding uh, about uh, what that means and what that implies uh, because Chad said, well, you know, I don't think nature is a system. Uh, for example, that, uh, you know, he was uh, kind of uh, going on a a view in which nature, you know, never was a closed system, therefore it doesn't really follow uh, what we would call a system, say, like a mathematical system, uh, a scientific system in which, you know, the system works as a sort of predictive a control model. Uh, whereas uh, the Hegelian notion of system uh, has nothing to do with control, has nothing to do with... Uh, uh, the capacity to do anything, uh, though, you know, ideally the notion of science does uh, have to do with controlling uh, what it is that we know, you know, because we know it. And uh, check this out. <laughs> Get out of there. What are you looking for? Come on. Get out of there. Poor little guy likes to roll in the grass, but uh, you know, I brought him around yesterday and uh, he had one tick at least. It's annoying to take those things off. Uh, so anyways, back to system. So the Hegelian system has nothing to do with, uh, you know, uh, having this notion <laughs> Um, that if you have a system, then everything is perfectly A-OK. -okay. Um, it's not, you know. You may comprehend, for example, an ecosystem. And, you know, ecosystem is called an ecosystem for a reason. Uh, you know, it's a unified whole. Uh, you can study ecosystems uh, in parts, but, you know, if you're going to study an ecosystem in truth, uh, you're going to notice that it is a unified whole in the end. Uh, but that whole is not... A closed whole. Um, you know, uh, the uniqueness of nature for Hegel is that nature is always open to externality uh, and therefore it is not absolute system. Uh, everything in nature is 
physical. The physical is material. The material is spatial temporal. The spatial temporal is self external. It is always open to this self and other relation in which the self never fully subsumes the other. You know, the other uh, in nature is always going to be fundamentally there and forever out of your ultimate control no matter how perfect uh, you know your knowledge of uh, science may advance you know you may be like those supposed aliens you know billions of years ahead of us that uh, have transcended into the 11th dimension or so so even they by virtue of being in nature because uh, they are still natural beings uh, they don't exist in some sort of ideal world that's uh, you know an internal mind or something or hell even if they existed in uh, a matrix for example uh, uh, they still would not be in control because the universe is gonna do what the universe does and it's gonna fuck your shit up uh, there is there's no ultimate control uh, you know all you can do is mitigate things but mitigation is not ultimate control uh, nonetheless you can fully understand what is going on you can fully understand that uh, you know a system like an ecosystem has to have certain species has to have you know certain uh, flora uh, fauna fungi uh, has to have you know a whole water cycle has to have a carbon cycle has to have you know the sun might not need the sun you, you may have like underground ecosystems blah 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 you know sure it's possible but just because you come to understand that and you know you may given the conditions being proper uh, and you know uh, stable enough you may come to have a significant amount of determining power over that ecosystem but nonetheless you do not have an absolute dominating power and determining power uh, over that reality you know that ecosystem is always going to be capable of going out of your hands not simply because uh, you know it is an entity for itself uh, you know that it escapes your will uh, but also because uh, it itself is not in control of itself you know you may have a, a full grasp or as full of grasp as possible uh, of what the ecosystem does and how it functions nonetheless you can't stop earthquakes you can't stop volcanoes you can't stop uh, you know solar magnetic storms uh, radioactive storms you can't stop a gamma ray that burst you know 10 million light years away and you know we just got caught in its tracks you can't stop that so you know nature is just going to be out of your control nonetheless you can know exactly how it works you can know what is possible in nature you can know the entire system of nature theoretically uh, but this does not give you godlike power in reality uh, you know, just because you know, for example, how dogs work doesn't give you magical powers to just do whatever it is with dogs. Uh, ideally, you know, there's uh, there's this desire that this would be true, and you know, perhaps at a certain point you can come to such a genetic mastery that uh, you may, you know, you may just uh, be able to start creating creatures willy nilly. Uh, combining this and that and uh, figuring out like what the genetic code itself actually is so you find out you know what's the kind of codes that code for bones shape uh, eyes etc and uh, in learning that uh, you know you don't you might not even have to uh, be taking species and splicing them here and there you might actually be able to just uh, take raw the raw ma genetic materials uh, and uh, as well as cellular materials and just actually put that together and uh, literally program new life that has no organic basis whatsoever other than that you've learned the language of biology uh, biological genetics at least uh, there's questions about whether there might be other biology uh, than genetic biology but uh, that is uh, nothing but speculation <laughs> Uh, so yes, going back to the generalities of system. So you know, a uh, Hegelian system. Uh, uh, it's not about totalitarian control. Uh, it's about comprehension. You know, you can comprehend uh, the systems of nature. Uh, it's not a bad thing, actually. It's a pretty damn good thing. Um, 
because comprehending the systems in which we live, particularly the natural and the social systems above all, uh, I mean, those are basically the two major systems that are matter anyways, uh, as well as, well, no, there's three systems, you know, the three systems Hegel uh, puts forth, which are the logical systems, the natural systems, and then the social systems. Uh, and all those three matter because when you comprehend those systems, you have a significant level of determining power. Uh, assuming that you want to do something with that, uh, you know, assuming that, uh, you know, perhaps you think that the best way to uh, deal with things is to leave it to nature. Um, but, uh, you know, I'm of the opinion that we have gone so far with meddling with nature that that is not a good idea anymore. Um, nature will always fix itself, but it will fix itself on a timeline, in a time scale, in a life scale, which is going to cause us and other creatures an immense amount of suffering in between. Uh, so, you know, uh, simply saying, well, we're just going to leave it to nature is not going to quite be good enough. Uh, because nature takes her sweet, sweet time, and uh, we don't have that time to be waiting around, uh, nor do other species. Um, for example, uh, one of the things that fascinates me is something called uh, holistic uh, management, uh, which has to do with holistic grazing as well. Oh my god, I can't remember who... who um, Alan Savory, I think is the name of the guy. Uh, he's got multiple talks. You can look them up on YouTube. They're very interesting. And he, he came to the idea that, you know, desertification, which is a problem you don't hear about. You hear about deforestation. You don't hear about desertification. What a big deal that is. Um, that deserts are spreading um, at an alarming rate everywhere. Um, and there was these theories for a long time that you know this has to do because there were too many animals and they were overgrazing the pastures, they were overgrazing the trees, um, and so there was, in many places, a long-standing policy of let's just basically uh, cull the populations down, and the problem kept getting worse. And uh, Sabri was one of the first people to come to the realization that we were completely wrong about how this worked, that it was not because there were too many animals, rather it was because there were actually too little animals, uh, that the relationship of, of the fauna to the flora was a, a symbiotic relationship. You need the fauna to keep the flora. Uh, you know, you need large masses of roaming and grazing creatures to keep roaming the grasslands, to keep the grasslands healthy, because if the grasslands aren't being eaten and they're not being shat on, they're not being pissed on, and the ground isn't being trampled on, the grasslands die. And as they die, desertification happens, you know, the soil, the plants die, the soil uh, cannot retain water. Uh, as, uh, you know, the quality of soil degrades over time, uh, the situation just gets worse and worse and worse and you know there might be rainfall but since the soil has no plants the soil quality is so low that water just evaporates almost immediately as soon as it falls um, and that is due to the ignorance of the systems of nature you know had we known this we could have averted quite a lot of problems so you know to say that systematic thinking has no place in a post oil future is to me insanity uh, you know we need that more than ever before, you know, and uh, we have come to an awareness nowadays that systems uh, do exist more than ever before. Uh, you know, in biology, um, this is a growing uh, awareness. In uh, ecosystems, this has been a forced awareness. We had to come to an awareness of this, but nonetheless, it's, it's one of the places in which this is most explicit, and yet it's still a minority view. Uh, that uh, how these systems work, you know, the, the questions of that are just uh, amazing. Uh, stuff like uh, permaculture is systems thinking. Sorry. Uh, and all that stuff, you know, if we if we have a social collapse, a, a technological collapse, you know, because uh, we run out of oil and uh, we have nothing to replace it. Come on. If that happens. You bet your ass we're going to need to have an awareness of the systems of nature because otherwise 
we're going to back go back to a an area of ignorance and productive capacity um, of a you know the Middle Ages, um, hell even worse probably. Uh, and there is no reason whatsoever, no reason whatsoever, why that should even happen, you know, given what uh, you know our development of science has allowed. Uh, even if we lose fossil fuels, even if we lose mass me mechanical industry. That does not impact the amount of knowledge that we have gained about the natural systems and the ways that lets us deal very well with, uh, you know, the coming problems of a new lifestyle which would require us to uh, scale back um, our mass industries. Uh, you know, uh, going back and uh, being a, a regular crappy old farmer um, is not going to be good enough. You know, uh, the changing weather conditions are going to make certain areas worse, blah, 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 etc. Uh, stuff like greenhouses, you know, you think like, oh, well, you know, uh, it's, uh, we might not have the stuff to create, um, you know, mass glass anymore, but hell, we could still make glass. You know, stuff like greenhouses would be extremely important. Stuff like geothermal uh, can still be extremely useful. That kind of knowledge is going to be extremely useful. The knowledge of the carbon cycle, the knowledge of the uh, water cycle, knowledge of the everything uh, really you know the knowledge of how species uh, are required and uh, if we think that we're just going to let things collapse and uh, just leave it to nature um, we're crazy uh, you're, you're asking for an immense amount of suffering and trouble which is not necessary uh, given what we know That said, going back to the original point, uh, which is more of a <laughs> more of a logic point, um, the Hegelian notion of a system is simply that that we comprehend the unity uh, of the system. Uh, you, know, uh, you may want to say, well, you know, uh, there's always more. You know, there's always uh, there's always an other uh, an access to the system. Um, Maybe, you know, maybe, maybe. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm kind of the, the suspicion that uh, in a way there seems to be no reason to think that there is a, a limit of orders uh, and of natural forces um, and of, you know, uh, physical existences logically. But that does not say much of anything other than... Uh, you know, uh, imminently we see no reason why uh, there couldn't be a fourth, fifth, sixth, uh, and et cetera, infinity of dimensions. Nonetheless, there's also just no reason to think there are such things until those things actually come up. Um, you know, just saying, well, you don't know that there's nothing more. Well, you don't know that there is. So, <laughs> uh, we can play around, you know, with this whole, like, well, what if? Um, what if, you know, what if we live in the Matrix? Um, big deal, I don't care. Um, there's no reason that it has been offered as far as I'm concerned uh, about why we should think that we are in a Matrix. And until somebody offers an actual piece of evidence that uh, points to there being a, more dimensions, more spatial dimensions than three, um, we'll just stick with three. You know, until somebody points something else, you know, missing from the equations, we are best left to considering that, uh, you know, what we found uh, is good until nature proves us otherwise. And believe me, nature has proven us otherwise quite a lot. You know, it's always, it's always proving us wrong. And uh, that's good. You know, so long as there's something to learn, it's uh, the only bad thing would be if we're obstinate about that and really don't want to accept it. And, you know, that's a massive amount of stupidity. But hey, um, that's not me. That's uh, the egotism of, uh, well, people. Uh, people who don't like to be wrong no matter what. I mean, for example, the stuff that Alan Savory puts out, empirically proven, you know, he's worked a lot of places, a lot of times, and shown that his method uh, very much works to undo decertification at uh, an amazing rate. And, uh, you know, that's one way in which uh, we could 
help bring back um, the health of natural systems. Uh, and it, I mean, it's not that much. And nonetheless, you know, other people who are within that field of science uh, completely ignore, if not, you know, outright hate uh, and uh, uh, slam savory, uh, you know, uh, calling him a, a kook, a crackpot, uh, you know, an oil salesman, etc. Uh, but hey, you can check those things out for yourself and um, you'll see what I mean. Um, so yeah, systems are about unities. Um, perhaps then you say, well, you know, uh, for example, Chad brought this up and he said, well, maybe there's something, uh, you know, I don't think system is fundamental, uh, you know, I think there's something more fundamental. And he brought up idea, an idea of uh, Aristotelian substance as limit. And he gave uh, these spatial metaphors and I'm not quite sure I understood those. Uh, but, you know, I'll have to look into that further. Uh, but at the same time, I think that's a sort of misunderstanding of, of what Hegelian system is, uh, you know, or what system in the Germanist idealist notion is, uh, which is this system is just, you know, the unity of the world. Uh, if you don't think the world is unified, I, I think you're crazy, uh, because if the world is separated, something must be separating it. And if something is separating things, that very thing that separates is the exact same thing that unites it. Uh, and so the world is always already unified no matter what we wish to think and uh, look at that beautiful field in the back uh, and just simply to say that nature is a system is simply to say well obviously nature is unified you know there is there is no magic if you think that nature is not a system you basically must believe that magic uh, exists uh, and I don't believe for a second that magic exists uh, except for one thing, and that is thought. Uh, Hegel defines magic as immediate connection. Uh, and there's nothing in the world that it has truly immediate connection except thought. You know, thought immediately connects to itself as thought. It's the only magical thing. Uh, you know, the closest thing to uh, real magic uh, is literally me speaking to you right now language is magic uh, and actually that's not a not a strange idea when you actually think about it uh, you know that uh, just a bunch of words and ideas you know being communicated through uh, through air and vocal cords and uh, whatever their machines make noises or visuals or you know any other way that there is to communicate in the world um, it's basically magical I mean we're having a, an immediate direct connection uh, of mind to mind uh, through language it's not always perfect uh, for the most part it works pretty damn well look at this sometimes I walk around here and it feels like I live in paradise uh, in a way <laughs> yeah, I really enjoy walking out here But yes, you know, uh, system, it's not about totalitarianism, it's not about control, and, you know, it's about, uh, you know, the Galian system is about knowing. Uh, it's about knowing uh, the logical self-relation of the system uh, for itself uh, as it is apart from us, for example. But of course, you know, in the total system of the world, uh, we come into play, you know. Uh, you have to eventually transcend pure ecology and um, think about ecology in relation to uh, us in relation to our activities, uh, to our societies, uh, to spirit. Uh, and that itself is a higher system, it's a higher synthesis, uh, if you want to use the word synthesis. Uh, I don't like it, I would say sublation. But that is fine. Uh, but just because you know the system doesn't mean that you have any magical power all of a sudden. Uh, not you, the individual, anyways. Uh, you know, maybe the people who are in power, maybe the people who have the capacities to affect the system are the ones 
who uh, you know gain the practical power uh, brought by that knowledge you know but knowledge does not in and of itself immediately bring that capacity of power and nonetheless systematic knowledge is important it is important now uh, it was important in the past it will be forever even increasingly more important in the future unless we want to regress back to the Stone Age uh, like we supposedly regressed after Atlantis fell <laughs> yeah supposedly Atlantis was a civilization that was hyper advanced uh, probably more as advanced as us or more advanced uh, and uh, somehow or other uh, they fucked up or they got fucked uh, and the Stone Age resulted I don't know about you but uh, I don't think we should uh, follow that path I think we could do a little bit better I think what it could at least at least collapse and uh, just go back to you know the, the 1800s won't be too bad you know we won't lose that much progress uh, certainly you know if oil runs out uh, it's gonna be a doozy to, to overcome but other than that you know looking back at life in the 1800s it doesn't seem too bad especially the, with what we know today um, I think certainly there will be a reduction in the population but just by necessity and as well as the general changing lifestyle in which um, things are just not going to be possible in the same way that they are possible in an industrial society and in industrial life but uh, beyond that uh, you know I don't see a reason why we should regress so badly considering that we have a lot of knowledge which is not tied to the use of fossil fuels uh, we have practical power there that is not tied to the use of industrial machinery And all right, this has been Antonio Wolf. See you around.